Chris Sanborn, Warren Hellerod. Welcome to the Thought Room. Thank you two so much for being here today. I'm really excited. This is the first time I'm having two guests on at once. So this is an exciting moment for us here over at the Thought Room. Thank you for coming. How are we feeling? We're super excited too. Yeah. Yeah. So I I was saying just before we hit record that I often like to start by introducing how we met. And Chris, I believe that, well, actually, let me back up. I'm really excited to talk about water today Mm -hmm. on the show. And I've been getting this internal ping to talk about water for a very long time. And I didn't know why, but I think it was initiated by I saw a Netflix documentary a while back and Zac Efron was interviewing like a water connoisseur. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, wow, this guy is so attuned that he can taste all the subtleties in the water, all the minerals, what's going on. And I don't want to speak for everyone, but I know that I've definitely gone on a journey with just paying attention to what I put in my body. And I think five years ago, if you had asked me if I could taste the difference between water, I would have said absolutely not. Now my friends make fun of me because I bring my water, my alive water to restaurants, you know, like they'll pour tap water and I'm just, I'm that person who has their own (laughs) water. Um, And I'm very, very sensitive to obviously tasting the difference now. So I started drinking your water at the beginning of the year. Uh, a friend of mine, Brandilyn Clay, actually sent me a text. She's been a guest on the show as, as well as her husband, Charles, good friends. And she said, best life upgrade I've ever made Aww. is this alive water. She's like, you, you need to get it. And I was like, okay, I will, I will try this out. And I tried it out and it's totally changed my experience with water and my body and just hydration in general. I could go through the list of differences that I've noticed in my own body, but it's just made me pay more attention to hydrating more for one. I mean, when you're purchasing water, high quality water, it it makes you pay attention. So I think with anything, when there's like an investment in it, like, okay, I'm going to do that thing, right? You buy a gym membership, you buy some water, you're going to use it. So I started hydrating just a lot more. And notice very quickly, my body started to detox. Um, I was also, you know, doing a lot of sauna and and cold plunge, but my muscle tone started to change. I was like, okay, this is really making a big difference. To me, that makes a lot of sense. And you two obviously know way more about this than me, but the majority of our bodies are made up of water, correct? Yeah, definitely. A lot of people would say um, 70% water, uh, on a cellular level, um, but 99% water on a molecular level. Wow. Yeah. And I've also seen where um, like newborn babies are have an even higher composition of water. And as people start to age, they um, their water um, starts to... Like the saturation level? Yeah, the saturation level starts to deplenish. Right. Right. So yeah, it's so important to make sure we stay um, hydrated. Right. I mean, I'm no scientist, but if 70 to 90% of our bodies are made up of water and we're having the cellular turnover, to me, it makes sense that you want to be turning over with with high quality H2O. (laughs) It's funny. This is true. This is true. Yeah. You know, it's uh, water turns into our blood like almost immediately after we start drinking it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so backing up to how we met is after that, I I gave you a call and we got on a phone call and we started chatting about water and about my interest in having you as a guest. I can't remember how long this ago this was, but you were in Hawaii at the time. And I said, if you're ever in Austin, let's, let's do an interview. And then by chance, uh, I extended an invite to you last week to my big birthday event. Mm. And I just kind of threw it out there. I didn't know where in the world that you were. And you were like, oh, I'm actually going to be in Austin. I'll try and stop by. So we actually only got to meet in person, Chris, on the weekend at my event. And that was a pretty special moment Mm -hmm. for me, at least. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? So, so special. I I got chills actually just hearing how much it had impacted your life. Um, A lot of what I do is just 
on the computer and I love reading reviews, but it's just so different when you can really feel that gratitude and mm-hmm. and see that see that change in person, you know, all of the beautiful customers we have and just yes. seeing that radiance. Yes. And and Alive Water was so gracious as to to donate some water to our event. It was really important to me when we were doing the event planning. I was speaking with my event planner and she's like, okay, so we'll just pick up some, you know, we'll just, we get, people can have tap water. And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't do that. We need to have, we need to have bamboo disposable plates. We need nice. to have the highest quality water. You know, even if people don't, it's not about people noticing or knowing it's about my integrity with the way that I live and the way that I want to provide and mm. your water and hydrating people to the highest quality was a priority for me. So thank you so much for making that happen for all of our guests that came through. My pleasure. Yeah. And, and Warren. Right after the event, he told me about the story. He was like, bro. And he told me the whole story and I was like, it's true, Chris. This is happening a lot. It's happened to me also. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by happened to you, you mean... Feeling completely rejuvenated from the spring water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rejuvenated, and I'm, I'm I can't wait to get into the story of how on earth the two of you got so enraptured with H two O and went on your journey with Find a Spring and all that. But Warren, you as well, you you got to be Chris's plus one to the event, right? So we had never interacted at all. What was your experience of of that and of meeting me? Oh my gosh. We went to the bar to get some tonics and they were free, Mm donation-based. I was like, Chris, wow, I really feel the love here. I really feel the warmth, the community. Yeah. Um, My first impression was, wow, who are these people? (laughs) We want to hang out with them more. Yeah, sweet. You know what? That was one really great piece of feedback that we got because I had made the choice early on in the planning to make this a non-alcoholic event. And so people were going up to the bar, ordering things, and they were leaning into the bartenders saying, well, which which one of these things on the menu are non-alcoholic? And they were just like, they're all non-alcoholic. You know, we had CBD blue lemonade elixirs and like a ginger fizz and a watermelon lime. And it was very creative and very fun. And what I loved about the event was that despite not having alcohol, you know, as that social lubrication, I looked around And no one was on their phones, which was amazing. It was a long party and you didn't see people standing around, you know, just kind of going into trance. There were just such deep connective conversations and it was, yeah, very, I wanted to do it for free because it was really a a gift. It was my seva back to the community. So thank you for being a part of that. Anytime. So from here, I would love the two of you. I want to turn it over to you. And I really just want us to be able to flow with your story. But I know it's been a long, a long haul, I think, to get here. So I'd love if we could start with the interest in water, Chris, maybe how, you know, your journey with that, how the two of you connected and and we'll get to where we are today. How's that sound? Sounds great. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember... The first time I tasted living water, um, which is such a such a difference um, between just like regular spring water or other water that's out there, it's still it's still alive. It has the probiotics in it, which a lot of people don't realize. Happens. Okay, can I ask questions about that? Sure. So tell me about spring water versus living water. Like- yeah. So. Um, raw spring water, it has all of these healthy probiotics and microbes. um, And it's what we have evolved as humans to thrive from. It's what our ancestors drank for like 99.9% of our existence. And a few decades ago, um, water companies realized um, that they could store it more easily. by sterilizing it with UV light, ozone gas, um, or both of those things. And um, it essentially means that the water can stay in storage for a long time, no matter if it's hot or if it's exposed to sun and it won't turn green. 
Right. Like little algae won't grow in mm-hmm. it because there's no probiotics. Yeah. So it's it's a shelf stability thing. Right. Um, Which and, is the case with a lot of our food and drink. Yeah. Yeah. We're starting to realize the difference between raw dairy, like mm-hmm. raw fresh juice. Mm-hmm, yes. Um, and yeah, I remember I was just shocked. We were, I was hiking with my grandfather in the North Georgia mountains and um, we just drank from a stream mm-hmm. actually. And I was like, oh my God, this is like possible. Like this is, this is so different than, you know, I grew up like in the suburbs north of Atlanta and um, you just have this like kind of general idea that's instilled in us that like. You don't drink the water. Yeah, you don't. Well, there's drink this connotation water. with that, like that you're going to get e-, e. coli or something like that. I mean, how 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 real is that? Let's. Oh I yeah, mean, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So it's also, it's like you don't eat anything that's not wrapped in plastic or, you know, packaged this way. Right. Right. Yeah, that's another thing that we're taught. So, so this particular spring you were drinking out of how how did we know that it was safe? Yeah. So. Um, you know, I just trusted my, my grandpa. It's like, obviously he's drank from this stream before and it actually, it wasn't even a spring. I mean, probably started from a spring upstream a little bit. And, um, obviously, you know, you do, you do really have to be careful with that. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's like what our ancestors did. And, and of course the, the planet we live on now is, is, polluted in a lot of places, but there are those places that are still super pristine. And um, yeah, I was kind of reminded of, or more so um, educated that the, like practically all of the spring water, even good spring water, which has the natural minerals in it that our bodies need to thrive from is processed um, through the work of Daniel Vitalis and David Wolf. And then I um, started using Find a Spring, which is a, a beautiful site where you um, created by the public where you can find uh, cold and hot springs to go gather yourself or soak in. It's just findaspring.com, is it? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So this is where um, I what invited- What a great resource. And thank you to whoever is is driving that. That's, that's yeah, such that's a us. Gift. That's you guys. <laughs> well, so two or three years ago, we um, acquired it from Daniel Vitalis. Okay, great. And then we turned it into an environmental conservation foundation. Um, but yeah, early in our journey, um, about eight or nine years ago now, we. Um, we realized the difference and just wanted to go try it. So I called Warren and um, we went went hunting for some springs and we, uh, we couldn't find the first one that was on the map. You know, sometimes they're a little bit difficult. Um, and we just kept driving to another spring, probably spent like four or five hours just driving around. Wow. Um, where, where was this? Uh, so this was in Southern California. Mm-hmm. We were both living near Los Angeles at the time. Um, and then the spring that we ended up like harvesting for the first time was in Big Bear. Uh, it's a mountain up in California, up at 7,000 feet. And it just comes out super cold and delicious. Mm -hmm. And it was a really cool experience also too, to just see where water comes direct from the earth, like going direct to source. Right. Right. And um, yeah, I thought, oh, this is cool. You know, like, yeah, this is a, this, like feels really good. And then I remember we went to a restaurant uh, a few hours later and then it like, it hit me, it took a little bit of time and I, like a peacefulness and just like this, this amazing feeling came over me. And that's when I really like got it. I was like, oh, wow. It was you like felt- happening to both of us simultaneously while we were driving back with what? the five gallons full of the fresh spring water. Did it feel like... Like, did you feel altered in a way just, or just like, I don't know. Sometimes when magical things are happening in my life, there's like this time dilation feeling where it's not like I'm inebriated or anything, but there's this sense that thing I'm, I'm moving through time a little differently and I'm being shown something very important. Was it? I looked at Chris and I was like, Chris, 
do you feel that? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> it was so permeating the, the energy around us. And yeah, it so was you, strong. So you knew it was something you wanted to continue. Yeah. Yeah. At that point it was like, all right, well, this is the water I'm going to be drinking the rest of my life. And so, yeah, I would make the the journey all the way to the spring. It was like three hours from where I lived. How often would you do that? Um, Probably like once a month, just, just fill up a bunch of yeah. glass jugs. Yeah. I love that. And I want to underscore that because like, I want to say to listeners, this man was driving <laughs> three hours to go collect his own water from a spring every month because he knew how important it was. Mm. So I like to say that and repeat that back because I have thought leaders here to share their messages and they're people like you who go out and do things sometimes that others wouldn't. And then what we get to do is, pardon the pun, but trickle the information down, you know, and collect it in this beautiful reservoir for for everybody to dip into. So mm. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, my pleasure. You know, it's uh, I miss it sometimes. Actually, just me too. Just mm. going out to the mountains and like that whole journey. You just feel like so accomplished. It was freezing cold out there. We were wearing like <laughs> snowboard boots. Like, I love this. Raining on us. Wow. And we were just out there. Yeah, it was really in the nature. Like, wow. We we dive we dove head first into this. Like yes. Wow. So then I'm going to I'm going to take a stab at what happened next in your story and you can let me know. Did people in your life start to catch on that you were doing this and then like really want you to collect water for them and then it just kind of started to get out of hand or or how did this how did this happen with the live water? So I was living in Topanga Canyon at the time and I had a neighbor who had a newborn baby and um, she was having trouble having her baby latch on her breast. Mm -hmm. Um, And the doctor said it was because she was mineral deficient. She Mm -hmm. had been drinking um, just like um, reverse osmosis, like super purified water. Right. And I gave her some spring water to try. And um, within a few days, her baby was latching again on her breast. Wow. Wow, you know, I just had a friend of mine. Do you know Barton Scott? No. He was at, uh, I don't know, he was, he couldn't make it to the gathering, but he was on this show and he has a company called Upgraded uh, Formulas and they do liquid minerals. Mm. So I want to I wanna talk about this for a second because as I'm sure we'll get into, everyone's, <laughs> I think everyone's going to want to order your water after this that can, but it's only available in certain states, right? So some other people listening, are, are hopefully using some sort of filtered water system. I want to talk about, I want to talk about Brita's. I want to talk about Berkey's. I want to talk about reverse osmosis, you know, whole house systems, because we're, we're going to have listeners at every varying level. This is the first time some will be ever considering um, their water. Cause we're told, you know, the city water in a lot of cities, like at, when I lived in New York city, Oh, it's the cleanest water to drink. I'm like, <laughs> it has the most chemicals in it because yeah. they shock it the most. So it's like, what is mm. our definition of clean? Right. Like our, is right. your definition of clean pure? Because, cause mine is, but clean might just be cleaned and, and bleached out and, and, mm-hmm. you know, whitewashed. So I'd love the two of you to just chime in a little bit more about what you know about other water systems. I've heard about the Kankin water system, never used mm-hmm. it. So I want to give people at the end of this interview uh, lots of choices for wherever they are with their budget, mm. wherever they are, um, you know, in, in the world, what can they do to, to improve their water situation right now? Cool. Warren, you want to take that? Well, this is a really deep, 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 deep one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess let's start with shower filters because... We all know there's a lot of things in the water, in the tap water, and you know that goes into the showers and we wash our hands and our bodies. Um, You know, Luke Story actually did a two-part like uh, review on all of these in depth, and I haven't actually researched you know in a really deep way, but I do know that um, filters don't. They don't filter out everything. 
right? And so there's a lot of different tests that people have done that are on their websites. And to be honest with you, I got this shower filter off the internet and it was like $50. I don't remember the name. But I feel like it takes almost everything out. And I haven't tested it yet, but it feels really good and I feel clean. I don't feel like there's chlorine on me or whatever other chemicals are in the water. Um, So that's like a test I'm doing, if you will. And that feels really good. Good. I have a shower filter as well. Yeah. Necessary upgrade, I think. Very necessary upgrade. I live in Topanga and so water in Los Angeles is... is, uh, high in deuterium, high in chlorine, high in a lot of other chemicals that they put in to clean yeah, and the water. The, the fluoride, you fluoride. know, that they're putting in most cities and that's right. that's really hard to filter fluoride out. Fluoride is a big one. Yeah. And uh I had I had one of those sets of parents who were like fluoride free toothpaste and oh, like nice. every time we went to the dentist, no fluoride. And nice. so, you know, I had a, a bit of a leg up with all this, but for people who really want to go down the rabbit hole, they can they can look up fluoride. They can look at, up the calcification of the pineal gland and what that means. Uh, some others might know the pineal gland to be the area of the third eye. <clears throat> so if you have very important, very important, opening up that third eye, that vision space, um, and that connection to source. Yeah, and f- you know, fluoride is a, it's an interesting one because. There's natural fluoride that is actually in some good spring waters. Mm. Um, and then there's the like synthesized extracted fluoride okay. that they're putting in like huge doses in the tap water. I mean, these guys have to wear like hazmat suits when they handle this stuff. So, so tell me about, because some people listening to this might be like, well, I feel normal, you know, and like, I don't think these things are affecting me that they're talking about. I, I can speak from personal experience with what my detox experiences have looked like at various points in my life, whether I was detoxing from, you know, when I quit alcohol, my sweat definitely changed for a while. My skin started to express with, with more acne. Like a lot of things happened when I was doing these various organ detoxes at various points in my life. But how might one be affected by these chemicals and would they notice, um, I think at the end of the day, like why we do what we do and why we're here sharing and why we're living our lives in this way is Charles Eisenstein said it once in one of his essays. It's something along the lines of, you know, we want the world to, all of the people of the world to fall in love with the world and with life and look at their life like the same way that, uh, mother looks at her newborn baby. Mm. And so we're here to inspire people to do their own research, get in tune with their feeling bodies, feel the waters for themselves. Um, And we have a lot of experience. You know, we we have a a lot of study and also the universe is huge and there's so much stuff that isn't studied, right? And so... It's really important for everybody to, um, you know, do their own research and yes. also to li- listen in on cool podcasts and people that are doing things like what we're doing. There's not a lot of people doing what we're doing, and by no means are we wanting it to be like only us, you know. But it's like something that Chris and I are really passionate about, and we feel like you know, we're inspired to do this. Mm -hmm. And that means research and that means feel and it means be open, you know, so. I I really love this, Warren. I love what you're doing because what I hear is an invitation for everybody to turn back inward, right? And and so often we give away our power by, Mm. to experts or influencers Mm. or whatever. And doctors, doctors, of course, because what, what are we all looking for? We want to feel safe. Right. Mm. So we're looking to the experts in our moments of the kind of frenetic, anxious energy, like, give me the answer. Mm. So what we're doing here is we're just we're providing an appetizer. And the invitation for people is to be sovereign mm. and to really feel into maybe try multiple different things and find out what, what works for you because 
as, as we're saying here, every body is different and we get to cultivate the skill of listening more deeply. And water is super, super deep. This is a really deep study. We couldn't even cover it in, in a 10 hour podcast, but I've had water filters at our chocolate shop. We had a water filter. We also had spring water and you know, it felt good. But at the end of the day, if we have the option to have the spring water, like that's definitely what I'm going to go for and what I would recommend for everybody else about the Brita's and all of these different filters. I'm sure that these people want to offer a good quality product in a market and maybe they don't even use the product. Maybe they use something else. Who knows? But we're here saying this is what we drink. We recommend other people can do this. Also, if we deliver near you, also find a spring. Community uploaded, updated, hot and cold spring map. Please take some glass either from alivewaters.com or anywhere and go get some water. Yeah. Feel empowered. Feel inspired to do your own research. If you can afford it, get one of all of them and try them out and see how it feels. And then try a live water and see how it feels. You know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Warren. Yeah. Um, you mentioned glass briefly, and I, I want to talk about this. I want to ask a question about this. I laughed when the two of you, <clears throat> excuse me, walked in because we all have our little <laughs> orbs here, which if people are watching on YouTube, they can see our little live water orbs. I actually get compliments on mine wherever I go. People are like, that's the coolest water bottle. Where'd you get that? It's glass. Awesome. Um, because again, I don't want to go down a whole rabbit hole with why I choose, why we choose to drink out of glass versus plastic. You know, there was that big awareness over BPA uh, a few years back. And so everybody started to get BPA uh, free water bottles like Nalgene's and all that. Um, but I like drinking out of glass. And one thing that I b believe I learned about, but I'd like to ask you about your process of uh, your glass return. So, you know, we get these, are they 2.5 gallon yep. jugs of water delivered to my door, which I love because <laughs> I don't want to come out of my cave often. <laughs> and, you know, I, I love it because I have a relationship with the guys who deliver the water and mm. I come in, I give them, you know, drink of water. We like chat for a minute and it's this, this experience that you guys have created. And then, um, so I get my new jugs of water and then the old jugs are taken away. And I believe I asked a question once about, so what's the process for this glass? And I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe you guys are really conscious, obviously about not treating them with chemicals, right? So even if you order from another water delivery company, the glass that is being washed might also have chemicals in it, which you just don't consider. So yeah, I, I heard they were like power washed somehow. And, and that was a very conscious process. Can one of you speak to that as well? Yeah, definitely. So yeah, even touching in to start on what you said about, um, the plastics, you know, where that became a big thing a few years ago, like, oh, these BPAs are like hor hormone disruptors. Like a lot of times they would be throwing off people's estrogen levels. And so the com the plastic companies, a lot of them just kind of scrambled and they were like, okay, we'll just like pick whatever the next closest thing to BPA is, even though maybe, maybe it's worse oh, wow. is what I've been seeing some studies say, but Hey, they can stick a what? sticker on wow. there that says BPA free. Ugh. Yeah. So, you know, plastic does leach. We, we know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But glass is this, this beautiful uh, amorphous solid. So it's actually, you know, like if you go in like an old, old like castle or something, you'll see like the glass starts to like, um, starts to get thicker at the bottom because it's, um, yeah, it's this beautiful like crystalline structure. Mm -hmm. um, and even in that, there is different qualities of glass. There's glass that some has lead in it or cadmium or all these other things. So we definitely do our best to um, source the highest quality wow. Italian glass. Um, and yeah, the process for cleaning the jugs is definitely um, one that we put, put thought into um, using biodegradable soaps and then uh, heat, like hot, this hot soapy wa uh, water gets uh, washed with that and then it gets triple rinsed. Mm. 
Nice. Yeah. So nice. it's it's definitely uh, very pure. And not only that, it's a really cool looking glassware. Um, so for those who are on audio only, they can't see this, but you've chosen to put the flower of life mm-hmm. on all the glassware. Can you talk about what the flower of life is, why you made that choice to put this on every single alive water uh, glassware? It's it's really cool. And that was, you know, it's it, it, aesthetically, it looks really nice. People are like, wow, that's a fancy, fancy water situation you have there. So um, it definitely fits into the vibe of my oasis here, but... Mm-hmm also just really into sacred geometry as well. So if you want to tell our listeners a little bit more of about that choice, we'd love it. Yeah, so Flower of Life is this really cool pattern that um, can be seen a lot in nature and, and just the natural structure of, of the earth and so many things. And it's this beautiful pattern to me that, that rep- represents the interconnected um, reality that we all live in and you know water really is like the great connecting spirit as well it's um we're all connected in that way um so yeah just having that on there really um looks beautiful and um you know energy too is is so important like the like you know all of these scientific things like the mineral account and like the alkalinity, like all of that stuff's important. And I think there's just something so special about having a direct connection to source, like no yeah. intervention of like, oh, well, I think it needs this or that. It's like nature really does provide us this, this perfect substance. Um, if, if it is a really good clean spring, which um, they're not, they aren't always. So, right. so testing is, is important in that way as well. And um, that was one of the things um, when we took over find a spring that we definitely um, feel like is important to have the test results on there and working with uh, labs that can give people a discount if they, if they want to make sure. And um yeah, I think even if you do get our spring water delivery, it's just so cool to 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 have that experience. Um, especially like when when we're traveling, it's always so cool to just like connect with the place to like a good reason to like go into nature and just like feel the, the energy there. Totally. And we roll into restaurants as well with the the glass jugs. Oh, and good. We're in the same club. Politely decline if we can. <laughs> yeah. The other day I accidentally drank some of the water. It might have been tap water. I just wasn't thinking. But yeah, we bring, we bring <gasps> them everywhere. Did you survive? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. It's so funny because I definitely used to judge people like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. With like all their peculiarities and their preferences. And now, now having mine, I just, I have such a deeper compassion for literally any obscure thing that I see in the world. And um, again, it just comes back to sovereignty and just like letting people make their choices and interacting with each other as gracefully as possible. But well said. Yeah. Thank you so much for that explanation. And I also think that every time I go to drink water with the flower of life as the container, it's it's more ritualized for me. Mm-hmm. I even think about when you're eating out of a takeout container versus when you're eating off like a beautiful plate of mm-hmm. food. Or I've also heard that they've done studies on when you eat something with a different utensil. So one made out of plastic versus metal versus bamboo or your hands even, mm-hmm. it tastes it, it tastes differently. It's interacting with different material as it enters your mouth. So it's a different experience. And uh, yeah, like honoring it. Honoring, honoring it. it. And in symbology, right? So my home is filled with different symbols that remind me of things. And if your water is being held in a container that has been crafted and created intentionally with love and it has, it's literally encoding the water, it's encapsulating it in, in this sacred code from the universe that is, is mathematically pervasive. I think it's just adds, adds a next level on whatever level of woo woo you need <laughs> us here. I'm just going to name it. Cause I think it's really cool that you guys went that extra mile. 
You know, we just went to Aniwa and I've spent a lot of time in South America and all of the indigenous elders. Most people probably don't know what Aniwa is. Uh, Aniwa is uh, our friends, Vivian and Rudy, do a indigenous elders gathering uh, annually. They bring 40 or, uh, of the you know, of leaders of communities of their tribes to a place together. It was in uh, Big Bear, California. And synchronistically, <laughs> yeah, it was so synchronistic. And they spoke a lot about water. Actually, Benki talked a lot about water, and Mona Paloka did as well. I even spoke with uh, one of the guys named Rupert, and he's a Tahona Odom leader. And they all refer to water and see water as a, a being that has a spirit, right? It's first and foremost before it's this substance that nourishes us or that we use to cook or in our days. Water is a living being and has a spirit. And so anything we can do to remember that or tune back into that, you know, that's kind of what it means to me when I see the flower of life jugs. I'm like, wow, like, yeah, this is a, sp- a spiritual experience, you know? Like, it's really cool. Some people now are saying, there's nothing more spiritual than just being human and being you. And it's like, wow, it's really true. You know, the water is already so profound, so many levels. What a gift. We're really blessed. Really blessed. Yeah. What a gift. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I know that already there are some who are probably like surfing your website from their phone, trying to figure out how they can get this water. And so this will be a good moment to just uh, mention what's, what states you're serving and also mention that you've hooked up our listeners with a substantial discount for their first order. And I'm going to say first order um, so that you can stock up on all your glassware in that first order and get that discount at the beginning. Um, so thank you for that. We've also, we've already had, um, a bunch of people use it and enjoy it and give me great feedback about the water. And so for those who are able to access this service right now, cause I know you're expanded, expanding rapidly. Are you currently serving Texas or Austin, California, areas in California? I want to talk yeah. about where people can get water right now. Yeah, so to go back to the original thing that got me into it, um, you know, obviously I realized more people need access to this this beautiful, uh, pristine spring water. And um, we started out uh, in California, of course, and I uh, did kind of a journey around the whole west coast to find the best source and um, we started with opal springs in uh, oregon so that supplies um, we have two cold storages in san francisco uh, well one in san francisco one in los angeles so pretty much from san diego all the way to santa rosa um, is a great uh, great place that we started um, and for the water delivery. Um, And then, yeah, we expanded here to Austin about nine months ago. And uh, next week, uh, Warren is actually going to be starting a live water in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach for us. You're so kind, bro. We're actually starting it now already. You were so there with me, bro. Perfect. I'll go by myself down there and get it all dialed in, but we have a lot of friends there already. Amazing. So by the time this airs, definitely people in those areas will be able to get it as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Beautiful. Well, then switching gears a little bit, um, I guess before we transition, is there anything else that you want to say about water specifically, your journey with a live water um, and find a spring? And then in a moment, we'll just go into some a bit about your personal and spiritual journeys. Cool. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, such a cool time to be alive with everything that's that's happening with water 
and um, remembering these these beautiful medicines that are um, just can seem so simple but can also be so profound. Um, so yeah, I'm just excited to be alive right now. Warren, any final thoughts on water? Yeah, I just want to say thank you, Chris. You're so dedicated and hardworking and inspiring. I was invited to come out to Austin. He's He was out here starting everything, getting it all going, and I couldn't make it, but I really wanted to. And so it's really nice to be out here right now. The community feels really good. It's like, I'm surprised. I, I, it really feels good, and the earth feels really happy and alive out here. So yeah, really grateful to be out here and to meet everybody, meet you, see everybody inspired and going. Thank you for uh, joining the team in these last few months. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Yeah, so grateful to have that support. Mm. Yeah, I could, you know, we couldn't do any of this if it wasn't for the great customers like yourself. And um, yeah, I, I'm just always inspired to, to keep, uh, keep growing and making, making more awesome products. And, you know, we can always, always improve. Beautiful. I love it. Mission Hydrate Planet Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Start where we can, right? Reconnect everybody yeah. back. <laughs> so uh, I want to know how old the two of you are, if, if that's okay to ask. Yeah. And how long you would consider you've been on, I guess, what does that even mean? The spiritual journey, right? The moment we come out or even before that, mm-hmm. we're on it. But maybe where you started to wake up in mm. in this lifetime um and any poignant moments that feel as you just kind of like tune into it any threads that are coming out of the sky to be shared here with with this audience yeah i uh grew up in georgia um and something that had a, a really profound impact on my life was rock climbing um just being out in nature and like connecting with these these ancient, um, like they're almost like crystal structures in their own way. You know, each rock has its like special composition and they're just so ancient, the energy there. Um, so yeah, I moved to California when I was 21, I'm 34 now. Um, and I remember, um, I took a, a yoga class at, um, the rock climbing gym and that was definitely, something that um, made me start to become more aware of my body and like getting out these like subtle tensions just through movement. And then that led me to like studying meditation and the impacts that had and really just cultivating, you know, like you said, like a spiritual journey, like more like bringing more awareness to energy and like how I'm feeling and like the thoughts that are coming through my head and um, taking healthy steps to um, just feel better so I can, we can serve the world better. So um, yeah, that was actually one of the things that me and Warren first connected on. We were both really deep into Kundalini yoga. Oh really? Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do you still practice Kundalini? We do sometimes together. Uh We, We do. Yeah. Sometimes. But comparatively, like we were really, really into kundalini, like always going to classes together, doing kundalini every morning. Did you guys have the the stereotypical kundalini awakening moment? The fire shooting of your spines? <laughs> Maybe. <you know>? Yeah, <laughs> I, wouldn't, Once or twice. I wouldn't say it was like such a moment. Um, I will say I can understand how people get into cults now. <laughs> oh, tell me that. That's interesting. <laughs> this, I wa- this I want to go into. Yeah. What's the psychology of, of fi- falling into a cult? <laughs> well, you know, it's like this a lot of times and especially in society nowadays, it's like we don't have so much of like a, a lot of people don't have like such a community that they feel a part of like this, mm. this thing where everyone has kind of a common goal. Right. And, and um, so, yeah, with Kundalini, uh, I got super deep into it. I uh, was vegetarian for five years and um, no longer. No, uh-huh. no I'm, I love hunting and fishing now. Uh-huh. Um, but 
I, you know, I realized like a lot of the, um, the farming and, and animal raising practices that are happening, um, for the most part in this country are just so, um, like torturous, really yeah. like calling it what it is to animals. And I just didn't want to support that. Um, but now I realize how, how beautiful it is to participate in the, in the circle of life, um, with hunting and fishing and mm-hmm. just, and that's, you know, it's different for everyone, but for me really like having fresh seafood, like, and like, um, wild meats just feel so good in my body. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to just touch on this briefly because I think it's important. It's also a part of my life. I went vegan for a while and, and vegetarian and I was pescatarian. I've, I've tried a variety of different things. Mostly it was because I was having such crazy inflammatory responses to like most foods uh, when I got Lyme's disease that I was just like, I couldn't eat anything without just swelling up like wow. that girl from the Willy Wonka thing, the, the who becomes a blueberry. <laughs> that was me. I would just like, I would go to bed and I'd just wake up like really swollen with like wow. multiple chins and just, you know, wow. fluid in my face. Um, and so I just started to cut out everything nuts because like what the nuts are treated with and then the mm. way the nuts travel and they get mold and mm. coffee and a lot of coffee has mold in it and just all these things that I was, um, learning about. So for a while I felt like I could only eat like leaves of green, wow. <laughs> you know, and it was really hard on me. Um, but now I've gone back to meat. Um, it feels right for me. It feels, my body feels more vital and vibrant. I also do a lot of work in the spiritual realms. And sometimes when I am doing a lot of that, I can kind of etherically feel like I'm paper thin Mm. and having more dense nutrition, having meat has been very grounding for me. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, then I get to take the next conscious step, which is where am I sourcing my meat, Mm. right? And I think this is this is at the crux of something because a lot of times we become aware of things and then we feel overwhelmed. Like I just don't have the capacity to, to do anything about this. So the shame keeps us and the guilt like kind of compartmentalizes it. And we go like, I can't, I get, this is the best I can do or whatever. And that may, that's fine, you know, but I love to, when I become aware of something, say, well, what choice can I make right now? That's just a little bit more aligned with Mm -hmm. that. You know, if, if someone hears this and they think we're trying to tell them to change the way they're sourcing everything and change your toothpaste and change your water and change your meat and don't get, don't wear um, antiperspirants and (laughs) change your deodorant and just, Oh yeah. I haven't haven't worn deodorant. I know. And I mean, ever, (laughs) you know, yeah. I mean, that was, I hope she won't care that I share this, but my, my best friend, um, she's like a couple of weeks ago, she was like, I made the switch to, you know, non-aluminum, de- like to a natural deodorant. And I was like, awesome. And she's like, now I'm down to wearing deodorant like only a couple days a week. Nice. And people hear that and they're like, ew. But I barely ever wear deodorant. And that's because I eat pretty clean. Mm. I go to hot power yoga. I drink a lot of water. I go to the sauna. I do mm. cold plunges. My organ systems are happy. So I've actually had people tell me they like the smell of my sweat. Me too. Yeah. I'm like, that's because mm-hmm. you're not smelling what a bunch of crap that I'm detoxing because I'm making daily conscious choices. So I just thought I'd like to name that. And then the other piece that was that you brought up was yoga was really big for me as well in beginning this journey. I think, you know, when you first go to a yoga class and they're telling you things like, well, spiral, you're in downward facing dog, spiral your armpits downward. You're like, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, I'm just in this like V pose. Like, I don't know what spiral my armpits down means. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then if you keep going, you start to, you're like, oh, they're using this language that you start to understand the subtleties of. Mm -hmm. And you start to awaken different muscles that you've never used before and the experience really gets you tuned in to your body and you get to build strength and then they're teaching you about the breath and I don't know about you but when I first started yoga I couldn't 
follow the breath pattern. So I was just like, <laughs> like right, just trying to right. like hang Being upside conscious down. conscious of and, your breath. Yeah. Definitely then, couldn't do it. And then Am you, I shallow breathing right now? Like, right. oh, I have anxiety. And what, like, and what the heck is an ujjayi breath, right? Like, <laughs> but then over time you start to get it and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, there's this oce- oceanic breathing I can do, constricting my throat. I'm, I'm syncing up um, my inhales and my exhales with specific poses at specific times and you get into this deeper flow. And so yoga absolutely brought me into just the idea of awareness and being aware inside of my body to, yeah. to the subtle shifts. Intentions. Yes. Holding patterns, I call them. It's like you don't even realize that well, why would the right side of my body be tighter than the left? I didn't even realize I was holding this one shoulder, you know, a whole inch higher than the other shoulder. And we all have these adaptive patterns. And again, for another rabbit hole, for another podcast, our our issues are in our tissues, right? So mm-hmm. stuck emotions are getting stored in the body. Thoughts, thoughts and emotions we can change much more quickly than our physical 3D vehicle. So that's why too, often when people are making changes, we live in a world where everything is so instantaneous, so commodifiable. You invest in something, people want to see the results now or yesterday, mm. right? But if, if, you're, if you're dealing with a, a vehicle, a really advanced piece of biotechnology, which is the human body that has this process of cell turnover, you need to be patient and you mm-hmm. need to let it kind of regulate itself. And that takes time. Mm-hmm. Well said. <laughs> wow. Over to you, Warren. Do you have anything about your personal journey or any peak moments or um, deep medicine experiences that, that really shifted you? Um, really? You know, Chris and I met and we were instantly... I was working with Shaman Shack at the time and I was in the kitchen bottling some herbs and sea clear. I just love the beginning of the story. I'll say that. I was in the kitchen with Shaman Shack bottling some <laughs> herbs. And, just, it just couldn't get better. <laughs> and people would come in and, and pick up their products instead yeah. of uh, having them shipped. And Chris walked in and I, we immediately were like, wow, like soul, like bros, like really. Like, what's up, bro? <laughs> I think we both had beards and long hair i had dreads i believe chris also had dreads maybe. at some point maybe it might have been at that I think time it was dreads still too but we were just you know and then we connected on kundalini that was like one of the things that was already in our worlds deeply and uh yeah just going with chris to kundalini classes we used to go to Guru jagat's classes all of the yoga west for me, this was like, um, like Chris said, it was uh, a community, right? We were opening our chocolate shop at that time. I did a raw chocolate shop with my friend Justin for uh, 10 years. And we were about to open this. And this was like stepping into a whole other community, right? Kind of like where we're at now. And to be in the Kundalini community was like, being in a community that's already going and established with super deep roots, super deep practices, you know. So to be in that together was completely profound. Um, that's a huge part of my life. I did my teacher training. I did a thousand day practice. I did a three hundred and sixty five day practice after that. And um, you know, I really encourage everybody to breathe. You know, Amrit, the guy, the teacher that taught us. He came into the class on Saturday and he's like, all right, guys, welcome. We are going to get in tune with the beings being breathed. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? The beings being breathed. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Wow. (laughs) What is he doing? Yeah. You know, just like you're always being breathed even when you don't think about it Mm -hmm. and how powerful that is. So to tune into that and to work with that as a weight of yoga one of the limbs of yoga is right it's a uh, it's a prana it's a pranayama Mm -hmm. one of the limbs you know and and how profound that was so chris and i doing that was completely epic yeah completely epic deep deep respect for that practice Mm -hmm. are you still do you still have a breathwork practice of sorts no i don't 
I don't, I don't do any meditation really other than like meditating on life like mm-hmm. in the moment. Waking all. contemplation. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I, and I still do that with Chris too. We, we, we still do, you know, that's like our, our work, if you will, is our spiritual practice. And it's like, we're still in that container. It just, it looks different. Mm-hmm. And we do do Kundalini and rock climb and, Breath work is is definitely one of those things. It just you know five minutes you feel so much better. Just some pow- like really powerful breathing. Like you right. get so high from that. Oh, absolutely. There's I have breath work resources on my website, and I also really got a I, I guess like second initiation into breath work when I went to Joe Dispenza this year ah, because he has you do cool. really intense breath work and breath holds. And I mean, people are like popping off of their chairs, like falling over, having DMT experiences. Like <laughs> Sounds like Wim Hof. Like, people are like, I'm just going to go see this Dr. Joe Dispenza. And they're having these insane spiritual experiences because actually they're the perfect ones. They're coming with a beginner's mind, right? If you have a lot of practice and you come, you're like, I'm going to do the most intense breath holds. Like you might get in your own way, but some of these really sweet people just showing up, um, some husband whose wife dragged him there or something like that and just has no idea. And it just ha- gets to have this endogenous DMT release from, um, from breath work. Breath, I believe is a portal, mm-hmm. you know, it's, um, like you said, it's autonomic. It's, it's going on whether we're thinking about it or not. And yet we can, with our awareness, choose to focus on it. And when we do focus on it, then we have the ability to to control it. And there's not many things like that. You know, I can't, to some degree, maybe I can think about my blinking or my heart rate, but the breath is this immediate way where you can take the chaos of your experience and you can laser into your core, the center of your being, And I often will ask my body the question, how do you want to breathe right now? Sometimes I decide to steer it. And sometimes I simply ask the question, how do you want to breathe right now? Mm -hmm. And it might be in and out, especially in a medicine journey. So this was, this was a big thing that happened with, with me and ayahuasca. I realized how much during ceremony I was fighting myself. I was trying to make it a certain way. If something was uncomfortable, I'd feel my breath quicken and I'd feel my body tense up and you feel the nausea. But if I would ask the question, what do you need right now? How do you want to breathe? It would change the entire experience. It would bring me from a victim, like this is happening to me. This is really scary to sovereign and, and very sweet with myself. So that's my that's my thoughts on the breath as a portal. I don't know if you, the two of you have anything else to add about your experiences with that. One thing about that is like our friend Brian has this Zen quote and it sounds exactly like that. And it goes, what is it that is seeing? And when you tune into this, it immediately brings you into the present moment and you tune in with the part of yourself that is the soul, right? Right. And I really feel like that's really, really powerful to ask yourself, how do you want to breathe right now? Because all of this, this whole conversation, everything we're talking about is about creating a relationship with yourself and tuning into your body and listening to your body. What does your body need? Has it had too much? One thing, right. enough of this thing, you know? Right. It's really powerful, this part. Right. And this is, this is empowering the self. And again, going back to what we were saying about... Um, doctors, you know, these people that we look to, we, I I won't say we, I used to think I didn't know how to take care of myself, but there's so many things that, that the body knows how to do. The body has a lot of wisdom. We've just been taught not to trust it. And as I was writing for my book the other day, I was thinking about the idea of falling asleep and it's like, well, how does your body know how to fall asleep? Is, your, is it your mind saying, hey, fall asleep now? No, that, that wouldn't work. And we don't think it's weird that most of us quite naturally fall asleep because we've been doing it since we were born and it's practiced into our culture. There's a ritual around falling asleep. There is a lot of other subtleties that, uh, about the body that we just haven't been attuned to in the same way that we have when we know we're falling asleep 
right? So I really um, encourage people to to start cultivating this relationship with their bodies more deeply. If you've ever had a chronic illness, you're probably well on your way because the circumstances have forced you to take a closer look at what you're eating, what you're doing, what are these herbs, yeah, what are these teas, what can I, you know, for me, I lost my menstrual cycle for several years wow. in my 20s and nobody had any explanation. They were, were you seeing, um, taking birth control before that? I was actually, I had been off birth control, uh, but I, I had at one point, maybe mm-hmm. from the ages of like 17 to 24 been on birth control, but I had been off of birth control for a couple of years. Mm. I also had, I, I had been diagnosed with Lyme's disease, but it was, it was gone before that. I was having insane mood swings, very depressive cycles, anxious cycles. This is before all of my work with ayahuasca and um, psilocybin. So there was a lot of, I think, emotional healing that that needed to happen in order for that to free up. But down the rabbit hole I went, and as we were talking about plastics before, all the xenoestrogens and the hormone disruptors, I went through a big, big rabbit hole with that. I stopped eating out of plastic containers. I started looking at, oh, well, what's in pads and tampons? Mm. They don't have to label those. Oh, so I'm putting bleach in my body every time I insert wow. a tampon. And how many of these a year am I using? And how much, you know, I, I'm I'm not, I don't want to misquote the stat, but it's like an absurd amount of plastic grocery bags per year that each woman who uses tampons actually produces, like trash going directly into the earth. And so um, again, the awareness came, a little overwhelming. And I said, how, how do I want to... How, how do I, what different choice do I want to make for a while? I switched to using a menstrual cup and those are great because those are reusable. And I was offering my moon blood to the earth and to my plants. And um, now I've even taken it a step further because I have the luxury. Well, I don't even want to call it a luxury. I have very intentionally and with a lot of courage and bravery created a life where I can be at home and I can create and I can do what I love from home. That was not always the case. There were, there were years of my life. I was living out of my car. I was qualifying for food stamps. I was so poor. I I couldn't go out to lunch when somebody asked and I was living in so much shame. And I'm going to tell you that was less than five years ago, like maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you're, you're just free bleeding now. So now I, yep, I have the period underwear, the things nice. underwear, and I just free lead into those. And I will tell you that before I made all these switches, um, when when I was not getting my period, they they were like, oh, you're probably just a really busy, stressed person and you're you're quite thin and athletic and busy. And so, you know, that's probably what it is. They wanted to put me back on birth control wow. to force a bleed. And that's when I started doing the research and I was like, the period you get on birth control isn't even a period and it's, mm-hmm. it's withdrawal bleeding because they have the week of the sugar pills, right? Or you just, a lot of people don't take the sugar pills. They just stop. So what's actually happening is your body withdrawing and, and you get this bleed, but you're, you're I mean, you're not having a cycle. It's, it's chemical. In Which fact, it's so important for detoxing. Right. And actually when they, first manufactured the pill, they didn't create that one week break. Um, and women could, women could and can, uh, according to doctors, just continue to take their pills and, and never have a period at all. If they want to skip it, they want to go on vacation. They just want to keep taking the pills wow. that doctors have said that to me that you can just keep taking it. That's why there's like the depo shot right? And it's like, you don't get a period for three months if you get that shot. And according to them, that's like healthy. Uh, Well, not everyone, but I definitely didn't. I wouldn't get a period when I was on that shot, which, Mm. you know, I'm sorry to my body. But anyways, so um, went down a whole rabbit hole with that. Now I'm I'm free bleeding into the, the things underwear. And I love it because first of all, after I got rid of all the inflammation in my body, my cycle eventually returned. And I did a lot of work with a tantric coach in Australia and all this emotional work, all of this, you know, ayahuasca. And I really saw the root of a lot of these things, which was anger and pain and self-hatred. And, um, but now I'm in better shape uh, than I've ever been in. I, I, 
I don't know what I weigh, but I'm going to guess it's less than I weighed in high school and I have more muscle tone. So this has nothing to do with them telling me I was a skinny, busy, maybe busy, but I'm still very busy. It had nothing to do with weight is, is what I want to say. And, and that was important. Um, and so I had to seek my own answers. And now my cycle is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it so much. It's lighter than it's ever been it's healthy and it's normal. Probably not as painful. N not as painful. And this was the reason why I switched from, I love that you, you guys are having this conversation with me, by the way. This is, Thank uh, you so much. This work is really important to yeah. my beloved Dakota Chanel. So yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. i am definitely learned a lot from her. Good. Good. So part of the reason why I eventually made the switch from the menstrual cup to uh, the period underwear was because Yes, even though I wasn't putting chemicals in my in my body anymore, I had read a lot about a lot of women experiencing more cramping with anything in their body. Yeah. Even with IUDs, right? That's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. But um I, you know, when I used to be a tampon where I would I would have intense cramps. Now I don't get cramps at all. I don't even I Beautiful. wouldn't even know when my period is coming because I don't get I might get like one pimple. Like there's no crazy, no back cramp, nothing. Like I just feel happy and relaxed mm. and I enjoy it. And that was not always the case. Um, so I know I'm on the right track with it, but but removing the tampons alone, I s stopped cramping. And I think if you search the internet a little bit, you'll find that that's a pretty consistent story for a lot of people. And then... Um, with the menstrual cup, it was the same thing. I was experiencing some cramping and then it was like, well, let's just try this. And it's been so beautiful. And my cycle feels like it gets happier and happier every month. It's exactly synced up to the moon cycles. Nice. And I think that's saying a lot in this day and age with all of the, the things that could possibly disrupt those natural hormone cycles, right? Like even the light. Congratulations. Thank you. This is really important to share this information. <laughs> yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity because I think I, I, I never really have uh, in this way. And I, I want people to know uh, that this is possible for them too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are great. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad that to have both of you on here today. And um. As you're drinking your alive water, alive waters, uh, Warren, I I want to ask one other question that came up about water and hydration before we start to bring this in, which is again keeping with the theme of we're not going to tell people what to do, but how much water a day do you two choose to drink? Do you drink it all day long? I had somebody else on the show who who was recommending only drink the bulk of your water at certain times, like around meal. Uh, can you speak to any of, of that for those who are really ready to optimize their water experience? How much water might we want to have? Yeah, for me, I really just tune into my body. Um, me and Warren do a lot of intermittent fasting. Um, like, you know, it's, 2.30 in the afternoon here in Austin and we haven't had anything today except tea and um, maybe a little bit of hot Bape. bay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and some mambe. And some, yeah, I saw you get your mambe. Yeah. Yeah, all those those beautiful earth medicines. It changes. It's all, it's all life is like... Right. Yeah, you changed. start to adapt. Like it's not, I'm not, I'm not hungry. Right, right, right. It's right, not right. even hungry. Um, it's, it's more like in tune... Again, this is just me. It's different for everyone. And I, I do have breakfast sometimes. Sometimes I'll have a big breakfast. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's also easier for men. Like right. in, in the biological history, we were kind of like out hunting. and like, totally. So we, we just didn't eat as frequently. Um, but yeah, with water, I just kind of tune into my body. And um, I find myself not really wanting to drink as much with meals. Um, sometimes it can kind of dilute your your digestion. Um, and yeah, I think it it really varies. I don't try and like you know set like 
hit like, a yeah, marker, I got a drink eight and glasses like, a day. No, I'm just like, oh, I'm thirsty. And, <laughs> right. You no know, food th- pyramids here. <laughs> yeah, no food pyramids. <laughs> I think I it's interesting too, um, because when when you do switch to to really good real spring water, um, like there's two different things that can happen. One, it's like your body's like, oh my god, I want to drink so much. Like you might find yourself just drinking way more than you ever have. Or like I honestly, I don't, I probably don't drink that much compared to a lot of people because the water I'm drinking, I don't need as much. It has all that good stuff in it. Mm-hmm. It really truly satiates. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, it varies for me also. I noticed yesterday we were at Luna's house and I didn't, I didn't drink that much water. And it was about 4 p.m. and I was like, wow, I didn't really have that much water yet. And I felt great. And it's, we're in the Austin environment. It's hot. We're inside with the AC. It's different. You know, back in Topanga, for example, it's been really hot and I'll drink a lot of water because it's just so hot and it feels like that's what my body needs. So mm-hmm. It varies. I try to wake up in the AM and go have like half a liter. But then again, like, I don't want to, I don't want to. It's right. okay. Well, and I think that speaks to the level of, your mastery, if I will, that the two of you have developed with intuitively working with your bodies. Uh, I've done a lot of work on that as well. I'm, I'm not sure. I think we're going to have people all over the spectrum who really want to be told to drink eight glasses of water a day. And I think that's, that's fine and great if that works for you as a starting point. And I always think about the psychology of introducing these habits. And even with like a diet, for example, it's for me, I always try to frame what I'm choosing as a gift to myself. So mm-hmm. if I get into the mindset where I have to drink eight glasses of water today and then I didn't hit the milestone, then I'm a failure and I kind of start to resent the whole process. Where if I have a really cool piece of uh, flower of life glassware and I actually love like the little, what, what would you call it? The thing that it comes with that holds The it. orb bag. The orb bag, yeah. right? So I'm walking around Austin <laughs> with my orb bag and it's my cute little water thing and it's just with me and it becomes this ritual of every time I take a drink, oh yeah, I'm doing something great for my body, right? And it's it's just right there and it's always supportive and I look at it as bonus hour. <laughs> I love that. I think speaking to that, like the attitude that you bring to life is so, so important. And it's like even, you know, looking at how you say things, it's like, oh, what do I have to do today? Or like, what do I get to do today? Completely. Um. It, it really does like reframe um, that everything is, is a gift for us. And, like, it, you know, it's a privilege that we get to do uh, beautiful work on this earth and this, this awesome time with awesome people. Totally, totally. And I think there's, a, again, going back to the transmutation of guilt and shame, which for me were very con- much connected to self-hatred when I didn't value or love my body or myself. I found my mind creating all these excuses for why I couldn't or shouldn't or didn't deserve or I can't spend money on that or some people get to do that, I don't. Where if I really couldn't access something, a change that I wanted to make, I just would get really kind with myself and I would say, I hear that this is really important to you and you find yourself in a position where that doesn't really feel accessible And I can understand why that would be frustrating. And let's just put it on the shelf as something we'd love to do for ourselves someday instead of pretending that I didn't care about it or didn't want it or pushing it away. Mm -hmm. And uh, then coming into more self-love after throwing up volumes and buckets of my own drama (laughs) from this lifetime, I was like, oh, wow, this, this vessel you know, after I, I had a lot of visions of how I had mistreated this vessel, mostly <clears throat> relationally and, and in sexual experiences earlier on where I just was like, oh, you poor thing, you know? And then after that, I just, I really wanted to care for this vehicle. So all of these little choices, they're like little Christmas presents to myself all the time. And I feel, I feel really great about them. And I want to invite that psychology in for anyone else rather than uh, if I don't do this, I'm harming the planet or I'm harming my body. Let's flip it and say, 
if I can choose this, when I can choose this, this is going to be so great. It's going to feel so conscious in so many areas. There's a book called The Psychology of Mystical Awakening by Patanjali. And I feel like this is the present day psychology of mystical awakening. It's really, really important, this part. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll put that in the show notes for everyone to look up. All these resources, we'll put all your websites in there. We'll put the coupon code, which is all one word thought room to get your glassware and your first order of water. I I can't remember the percentage. It's, do you know what your standard percentage is? Yeah, I think it's uh, 15% and that's off the first delivery and all the glass ordered with it. Amazing. Amazing. And if, if you go down the mineral or the water rabbit hole and you start researching all these different filters and at this time, alive water isn't available in your area and you want to do more research, Warren, you talked about our good friend, Luke story, shout out to Luke, who also is an alive water customer. He and Allison Charles, who have both been guests on the show. He did an episode where people can learn more about this. Yeah, I'll send you the link. He did a two part episode. Shout out Luke. Thank you, bro, for all the hard work. Mm -hmm. Definitely check these out. These filter reviews are good. Great, great. And then we'll also add the resource of our friend Barton Scott's um, upgraded formulas, formulas, uh, minerals. And we have a code thought room for that as well for people who find themselves with a water system where they would like to remineralize. So Chris, Warren, Thank you so much for coming today. This has been so fantastic. I've, I've dreamt about this water episode for a while and you've made my, my dreams come true. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? And if you have uh, ways of being contacted, if you're on Instagram, if you have an email address, if people want to get in touch with you for any reason or support your mission, make donations, where can they find you? Cool. Yeah. So my uh, Instagram is Gaia Guardian. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fun dun, one. Dun, dun, dun. Um, when did you snag that one back in <laughs> years ago? Years ago. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Gaia Guardian. That's prime yeah. real estate. <laughs> um, and yeah, speaking to that, um, you know, we all have this opportunity to be stewards of the earth in a really good way. And I really do encourage everyone to um, check out Find a Spring and um, figure out ways you can you can um, just contribute, uh, coordinating with your community there, um, visiting these beautiful healing hot springs that have just had such profound um, healings for, for so many people. Um, you know, when you go, you can clean up trash. Um, you can get test results for the community. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it, leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, my Instagram handle, I just changed it like three days ago. It's wild guy in waters. <laughs> yes. It was prime real estate, but <laughs> I got it. Nobody was looking at it. <laughs> and yeah, just like Chris said, you know, this is, Let's have fun. Let's connect mm. with nature. Let's go rock climbing in the gym if we don't have the boulders. And when the boulders are there, go out to the boulders. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Everything Chris said about Find a Spring, please interact. It's really a community resource that's free. Um, we just adding, we're adding right now. It's not quite launched yet. A feature maybe. It's so cool if I share about it right now. Yeah. So we're adding a, a addition to the vision of Find a Spring. Uh, called Find a Story to help people share about the stories of the springs from wherever they're connected with. Maybe the ones by their homes, the ones they went on vacation to, the ones they found um, at their friend's house and their friends told them about this. So this addition to the vision, Find a Story, uh, it's going to be a blog. And, uh, you know, really we want to hear people share the stories so that we can co-create through Find a Spring the current story and stories going forward. And if you want to add some of the history too, that's beautiful too. You know, all these these springs are so sacred yeah, definitely. and have been revered for for so many years. All of the history, whatever it is, it doesn't it's not it's not not cool, just share it with us. We want to hear. Um and thank you for having us and for caring 
about the waters. And thank you to whoever's listening for also caring about the waters. And uh, yeah, no pressure, just adventure well, uh, responsibly. (laughs) Beautiful. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you for your wisdom, your insights, your journey that brought you to this moment and for titrating all of this wisdom down to its gorgeous essence and sprinkling its nourishment all over this listenership and myself. Um, This was clearly something I was very excited about. So, so thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. It's our deep pleasure. It's gratitude. 